scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Until there is a problem, you are what? Unnecessary. As simple as that. If you don't need revelation, Joshua Selman is unnecessary. Except if I have something else to offer to you. If you, if you want to sing, if you want good music, come Sam. If you want good music, you are not going to invite me. Nobody, it is, I can't remember the last time anybody invited me to their church to come and sing. Have I not been singing? Answer me, have I not been singing? Why, why is it that when you, are, you put it there, word minister, don't confuse us. We are bringing you because of that aspect. Is that true? I was a music director. I've said it many times. Has he made you invite me to come and teach the choir? Because I have not developed myself enough. Hallelujah. This is what is bringing bread for somebody. Play something, Mike. Increase the volume and just play anything. Change the voice and play something that will glorify Jesus Christ. Really, listen, listen. I want to show you the excellency of value. You remain inferior and you keep criticizing people and dying in silence until something in you brings you out of that realm. Look at people who are always criticizing. They, they have not discovered something that they have to give. So every time they look at somebody, what are they trying to show us? Rise and become colleagues in that realm where there are very few people. Leave those struggling down and rise up. Play mic. Anything. Everybody say value. value. This can be side one. As simple as that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Powerful moments of worship. You think it won't sell? Answer me. If you wake up with this and this is charging your spirit. This is, hold on. Many people say he's just ministering. The tape they are going to package, is it free? value value Sam you will sing I always like doing this word. for time's sake we'll just have one sing any song you like anything at all and you will know the difference between him and me you will know that it's not as if God is unjust are you getting my point I will lift my voice and I will sing, I will sing holy, I will sing holy to my Lord and Savior, my God and King, 
I will sing holy. I will sing holy. I will raise the voice. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was and is. Hallelujah. I will sing before the throne forever. Hallelujah. Listen. That takes us to the next principle we are talking about everybody write competence write it down competence i will show you why some people will die broke doesn't matter how much they are whether they pray for 100 years their spirits will be electrified but as far as finance is concerned mm -mm. trust me hallelujah everybody write competence I want to make you hate average right now and I pray for the grace to do it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look up everybody. I sing, right? Why will you prefer Sam to me? Is it that I cannot sing the song? Leave the boy. He's listening to this financial... Oh, okay, he's following his mother. Are you following me now? Everybody, why since I sing and Sam sings too. What is the difference between two of us? Please be honest. Not just value. We all have value. What's the difference? The degree to which we have developed that value. Is that true? Is that true? Look at me. Tonight, I want you to be very sincere. For the first time, for some of you, stop lying to yourself. The Bible says, don't esteem yourself more than is meat. There are many of you claiming you are competent over some things you are not competent about. And you are wondering, why are doors not opening for me? Because you have not pressed enough. There is a level of extraordinary competence you enter. It's a realm of rest. There is no competition there. Hallelujah. If I'm to sing with Sam right now, I will just leverage on the anointing of the Holy Spirit on my life. I'll just say, Lord, forget about the voice. Praise the Lord. Say, I refuse poverty. Competence. Look up. Do you know that competence attracts all kinds of people and resources to your life? What is competence? Leadership, excellence, the ability to surpass ordinary standards, extremely accurate, mastery. There's a song they call Music of the Masters. Men who have mastered the art of not making mistakes. They have demonstrated in this realm that it is possible. So, when you watch them play, they are not trying to look for where Kiji and Ino, they are just laughing and enjoying the groove. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you imbibe the law of competence in everything you do, whether I'm not, you, you notice now, I've not mentioned any word business. Whether in ministry, there are ministers who they love God but they don't study scripture they don't know that they tell you genesis 1 verse 1 and and quote nonsense and they won't go back to listen to themselves and correct themselves see let me tell you something there is one man that challenges me bishop Oyedeko. he doesn't just quote the regular verses he will fish out one verse he will say something that may not make sense and pull out a scripture and then say it it was from him that i learned that it is good for a, a man to do what remember that our scripture what is it again to bear his yoke in his youth competence you want to be a man of god let me tell you if all you think makes ministry is falling under the anointing you will throw people down till the day there's nobody again in your parish or in your church 
Let me tell you, listen, listen. You must build yourself. There are aspects of your life that you must be diligent. I'm not talking of everything. What is that one thing that you know that I'm good in this one? God is my witness whom I serve with my conscience. He can take me anywhere. Many of you are average, average in many things. You say I'm, I'm multi-talented. None of them has brought food on your table. You are multi-talented over little average things. Why don't you strive for competence? The Bible says, if a man desires mastery, he is not crowned until he strives lawfully. There are aspects of my life I've told myself and I've made a covenant with myself and vowed before God that I will be so competent. God is speaking to someone right now. Hallelujah. It's, it's true that you have something. But that something is not enough to take you anywhere. And everywhere you go, the door closes behind you. Stop begging. It's a sign to go back. Build yourself and just stand. You are a city on a hill. The Bible says you cannot be hidden. There are ministers carrying complimentary cards all around. I'm, I'm a prophet. If you invite me, I promise you, you will see the hand of God in your ministry. My brother, if you find yourself marketing yourself, it's a sign you are not prepared. Proverbs 31, 31, and let her works speak for her at the gates. You don't speak for your works. Hallelujah. There are people with all kinds of complimentary cards. They have offices with AC. They have two or three screens. There's no value. There's no competence. They can't do anything. And this is the deceit you find around. Everybody just comes and says, okay, I am this, I am that. Very fine table. Nice jeep parked outside. There is nothing to offer. I'm challenging you right now. If you believe God is going to use your degree and you believe that your degree is one of the tools you will use, what is wrong with stretching it to the extra mile? Go for your masters. Get a masters and be confident so that they stop shutting the door at you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It's, it's my natural disposition. I dislike lazy people. If you are around me, it's impossible to be lazy. I will just send you away. People sleeping for hours without any work to account for why they are sleeping for that long. Hallelujah. Let me, I'm challenging you. Many youths in Nigeria are lazy. They are just hustlers. So it looks like they are hardworking. Hustling is not the same as smart work. Hustling is just to be hitting left, right and center anywhere. I know one door will open. No, you don't make it that way. There is something you have. For somebody, somebody can say, this is the rod of God in my hands. And you're going to say, Lord, I will carry this rod. That's what people like Frank Edwards did. Is that true? They took this keyboard and the voice that God gave them. And they said, Lord, I'm taking it. And right now, look at comedians in Nigeria. 2.5 million. These guys go, these guys go to London and collect 30 pounds per seat. Nigerians, just to make you laugh. And now you may think that they don't know what they are doing. They are not clowns. Try to make people laugh and see if it's easy for people to laugh. Do you know how frustrated you become when you give series of jokes and the people are looking at you? So don't think, you know, it's easy to look at them and feel these guys are just lousy boys, either because of their hair or this. You don't know what books they've read. And, and the way, this is, and I'm, I'm going to say this, if you are a gospel artist here, stand up. Gospel artist, if you are not sure, just quietly remain seated. I'm, I, I don't intend to embarrass you, but honestly, be confident. If you know you are a gospel artist, a worshiper, okay, whatever, stand up. I'm serious, I'm serious. Whether inside or outside, please stand up. Let me challenge you this night because you must prosper. You can hate me now, but you thank me tomorrow. Now, how many of you can show me three people, three people 
whose works mentor you and build you according to the area you see God taking you. Let me see your hands. Don't lie. Don't lie. Correct? Are you seeing now? This is a measure of your desire for competence. There is no reason why we should invite somebody from Koinonia here who would do what we are already doing. There is no reason. Hallelujah. I'm challenging you. Your voice, your gift can make room for you. You don't need to market yourself. You need no nonsense complimentary card. What you need is gift with proof that can deliver. Oedeko said the end of every argument is proof. Mukhtar is the person who, who dry cleans my, my, my suit and my shirt. I've not, I've not had the desire. Even while he was serving, he comes to do it because he has done it so well. When people like you, they will give all kinds of excuses about you. No matter what people say about you, it's only a matter of time. It will pass and they will focus on what they have to get from you. Hallelujah. How many of you rehearse worshippers? I'm challenging you. How many of you get up in the morning? Some of you are music directors in your churches. You know that what you are producing in that church is nothing to write home about. But there's nothing to challenge you. See, if you live around local champions who clap for you, even when you are wrong, you will be broke in life. There are some of us that come, you sing nonsense and somebody comes to tell you, wow, Jesus. And you are saying, really? Tell yourself the truth. I can get there, but I'm not there yet. Don't see Sam and say we are colleagues. You are not colleagues. Make yourself a protege. This equality nonsense is killing the body of Christ. We are equal in Christ. We are not equal in value. Are you getting me now? So challenge yourself. This is what I tell the worship team all the time. Hallelujah. This is what I, I challenge the leaders. If there is nobody, there are some of us, we hate challenges. We want everybody telling you it's alright. In the school of prosperity, it does not work like that. The Bible says, provoke one another unto godliness. I'm challenging you. Some of you have beautiful voices potentially. You are sitting here and then there are some of you, you are already looking for exposure. You only rest on the seventh day. If you are trying to rest now, you are deceiving yourself. At my level right now, if I try to rest and I say I've gotten it in ministry, is the height of self-deception. I can't say God has not tried for me, but there are heights. There are people who have gone ahead of us and they have shown us possibilities that exist in Christ. And we must press. I don't hang around psychophants. I hate liars. I'm not saying don't be around people who bless you and encourage you. But I am teaching you there is a way you can tame poverty. Competence. Everybody say competence. Please sit down. God bless you. Those of you who believe God is calling you to be entrepreneurs. I don't just mean you like business. You really believe there is an aspect of your life like that. Stand up. Let's see them. I assume that you are standing up intentionally without any kind of coercion. You know what you are doing. Let me challenge. I really want to challenge you tonight because I love you. Listen. If you cannot show me two to three people at least whose books, whose lives, whose videos are mentoring you and building you, I'm telling you straight to the point, you are not following the right path. Are you getting my point now? Who is challenging you? Who is challenging you? You want to become a public speaker. You can't speak well. It has not been a source of concern. You are saying it does not matter. That's the rod of God on your hand. Does it take 10 years to learn English? Can't you go and subscribe for extramoral English? See, this is the problem. Many people think if you do not humble yourself, you will die of poverty. There are times you need to go and learn. Please don't feel offended. I'm not just lashing you out of hatred. I love you from the depths of my heart. I hope you understand. 
I just want to, I want to provoke you to know that there is a way to the top and that that thing does not come by dash. We've spoken about the spiritual laws, but brothers and sisters, you can be so competent. You can be the very best. People pack auditoriums when people like Zig Ziglar are going to speak. They pray hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nigeria brought Les Brown and they paid so much money to hear a man come and speak for two hours. What is it about talking? Hallelujah. Please sit down. Show me the project you are currently doing in your life. Show me the book where you are currently writing something you are working on. And I know that you are already on your way out of poverty. I don't care if you are taking Gary right now. But show me the flamboyancy you are doing. Fine lady, handsome guy. And I show you a big deceit that will cost you so much in life. There are many people claiming what they are not. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is the school of prosperity. It's time to settle down. The minimum standard in the world today is excellence. That's the minimum standard. Whether spiritually or otherwise. That's why we pray. By the grace of God, we have a robust prayer team. And everybody has that spirit of excellence. But there are things I do every day. And where I don't, I cannot do it, I always try to catch up and make up. My spiritual life. I build myself in leadership. I build myself in entrepreneurship. You must build yourself in these areas. Challenge yourself tonight. I will be competent. I receive grace. This is your exit out of your present state. God is speaking to someone tonight. This is your exit out of your present state. If you've been suffering complex and inferiority, if you're always feeling offended when you see others, it's because you have not seen the rod of God in your hands. There is something you can hold that can part the Red Sea for you. Let me tell you something. There is something. You do not go and stand before the Red Sea without nothing. What do you have that can part that river for you? Hallelujah. The value of a man makes room for him. I read a book years ago by John Mason called The Enemy, called Average. And I challenged myself that I was never going to live an average life. Please listen to me. This could be an understanding that will exit you out of poverty forever. I call it intentional prosperity. Prosperity that you entered intentionally. You know what you did that brought you. It was not magic. When it comes to prosperity, it's not just about miracles. It's about principles that can be reproduced again and again and again. This becomes the basis of your confidence. Is God changing somebody tonight? The place is quiet tonight. God is speaking to somebody. Hallelujah. Write this word down, please. In your journey to prosperity there are three major things you will need to develop aside from all of these things number one or three levels of knowledge you must acquire what I call financial intelligence part of what I'm giving you is financial intelligence please write financial intelligence number two you need financial planning intelligence is good but it's not enough financial planning number three you need financial discipline today i'm going to announce a few books i've read a lot of books but there are a few that i truly believe you don't need to read everything but there are a few books that can help you what is financial intelligence The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works. The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need 
that helps you understand how money works is called financial intelligence. You need financial intelligence. The educational system in Nigeria does not have a structure that provides adequate financial intelligence. For instance, I redefined money for you. I told you a number of things, how that money responds to value. All of these informations culminate in what we call financial intelligence. Hallelujah. Financial intelligence also helps you to develop what we call in business an investor mentality, not a consumer mentality. Financial intelligence. Many Christians in the body of Christ have money, but they do not have financial intelligence. They don't know how money works. There are many churches, the men of God are anointed and God is blessing them, but because they lack financial intelligence, they do not know what to do. I look forward to times when we will not have to talk about this again because everyone will be blessed. We can now concentrate on other aspects of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Financial pursuit is not supposed to be a lifetime pursuit. It's a cause when it becomes a lifetime pursuit. What that means is that from your birth to the day you die, you live your entire life looking for money you never found. Some of our parents are 70 years right now. Some 80 years. Ask them what they are still doing. They tell you they are looking for money. My Bible tells me, except the Lord builds a house. It says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The watchmen watch it but in vain. The Bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning. Nigerians and sleep late in the night was the reward only to eat the bread of sorrow the bible says but he gives unto his beloved sleep hallelujah financial intelligence helps you to understand that every time money enters your hand i've, I've explained it part of it is for god part of it is for you and part of it is your is for your future please write it down every money that enters your hand is divided into three one part for god one part for your consumption right now another part for your future if you wear the clothes you should wear tomorrow now you'll be naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow now you will die hungry tomorrow so write it this is financial intelligence understanding all the information that helps money to stay in your hands Every time money comes into your hands, just know, please look up everybody. Put this as a golden rule in your life from today. Every major money that comes into your life, know that the tithe belongs to the Lord and any other kingdom investment. Part of it belongs for you today, your expenditures and then investment for your tomorrow. You cannot forget about your tomorrow. You cannot walk into a future you are not prepared for. Some of our parents are crying and dying right now. When they were, when they were young, land, you would sell land, maybe 250 naira in our today's money. Their colleagues were buying it. They, they were eating and drinking beer and and doing all kinds of things going to the market square and causing trouble now they are 50 years 60 years let me tell you something this life i want to teach you a powerful lesson this life is divided into four major phases this is a digression but let me help you understand if you understand this you will wake up right now and you will know that time waits for no one everybody right your life is divided into four phases there is the morning phase of your life there is the afternoon phase of your life. There is the evening phase of your life. And there is the night phase of your life. The first 25 years of your life constitute the morning phase of your life. The second 25 years of your life constitutes the afternoon phase of your life. God is challenging somebody. God is whipping childishness out of somebody with this word. The, the third 25 years from 51 to what now 75 constitutes the evening phase of your life everything afterwards constitute the night phase please look up and let me explain to you the bible says so t 
teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom listen it is expected by God that at the maximum of 25 years let me challenge you koinonia that at 25 years some things should have happened in your life are you getting my point at 25 you should be born again you should have known the Lord you should have been filled with the Holy Spirit and you would have understood the principles of the kingdom that means if you are after or over 25 you are you have entered the second season of your life already and that means you must catch up listen please God is speaking to somebody there's too much childishness in the body of Christ and we must kick it out by letting everyone know that what when you were mentioning future yesterday today was part of that future now that today has come that gentleman that came to give his testimony a bishop was reminding me I remember when he came post UME to imagine that he's rounded up service today I almost cannot believe it but that's the brevity of time Many of you can still remember the day you carried your iron box and you were entering your secondary school. Look at you today. Don't ever let the devil make you feel there is time. Have you heard that word? Some of you may be 16, 19, 20, 30. You are saying there is. Once you are 25 years old, that's the learning phase of your life. That's the time of your life you can make mistakes and go scot free. Are you getting my point? after that time some things begin to cost you listen i'm teaching you this thing because some of us never had this opportunity are you getting my point now some of you just got old how old are you 34 35 are you born again no feel the holy spirit no what do you know about life nothing the second phase of your life listen is the phase where you begin to make quality investment for your destiny where you begin to put to use what you have learned in the first 25 years of your life now if you catch up it's an advantage 25 years maximum of 25 once you are at 25 and some God is speaking to you because many of us here are over 25 you are just looking playing around smiling around somebody who is 15 years is playing you are joining to play with the person you are 10 years um behind schedule the lady is sleeping around doing every kind of thing you two are 25 sleeping around believing that i will get husband one day ladies listen let me challenge you this night whether you believe it or not ladies hear me i want to talk to you right now and I want to talk to you from the depths of my heart. Listen to me. A day will come in your life when the men around your age group would have been married. Are you getting my point? That means the earlier you become a virtuous lady and position yourself, the better. I'm not scaring you. I'm only telling you the truth. Hallelujah. At age 40, the probability to hear God to make any marital decision is almost zero. Is that true? There are some of us who just live carelessly. Honestly, I'm preaching from the depths of my heart. God is telling somebody, wake up. You have all kinds of roles of boyfriends and people around one for Monday, one for Tuesday. Continue. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You are sowing. You will enter the next phase of your life and turn back and say, why is my life like this? And God says, it's in my law. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Hallelujah. Many of you who are a lot younger, you have a big opportunity. Stop saying I'm a child. In Nigeria, what's the age for adulthood? 18 years, right? Many people are more than 18 years. Yes. So what makes you think? And there are two words that have made the youth in Nigeria. It has cheated the youth in Nigeria. One is adolescence. Two is young adults. Kick those words out of your life. If you are, if you are an adult, you are an adult. You are sleeping around and calling yourself a child. They say, I, I'm adolescent. What does that mean? So you can play around. Let me tell you, stop dreaming. 
if you are an adult an adult is one who is not a child simple financial dominion there are sisters playing around with their opportunities playing around with the youthfulness of their lives i'm not saying just jump around and say yes to anybody but what are you doing you are not positioning yourself you are there gossiping about people just you have 20 toasters keep watching keep watching as the toasters marry and you find out at a point that it will be ichabod the glory is it's not that god calls you that's how life works and brothers don't think i will not come to you because there are many of you let me tell you something you should have no business looking at any lady if you have not looked at your life any lady that passes around you're just laughing can, can we be friends I, let's just go out what to wear to wear time is going the morning face of your life is going i'm challenging you in this place there are some it's as if you would die who is with you many brothers you can't see a sister pass she's fine so walk quickly walk quickly don't let any brother just come to you somebody whose destiny is confused he doesn't even know what he's doing just comes around and twisting his tongue around you i, I think um we should we should get along along where There are all kinds of relationships that don't make sense. Relationships like occultism, like secret society. The people are moving, no vision. They are not going anywhere. They know they are not going to get married. They, they never talk about their future. They are always playing around, playing games. Do you know the hurtful thing, sister? Let me encourage you. That brother can dump you and ask another lady out the next day. But you, it can't be like that for you. It's time to be serious. It's time to be serious. Tell yourself, wake up. Tell yourself, wake up. The Bible says, Arise thou that sleepeth, and Christ shall give thee light. Financial intelligence. How did I get into relationship? Hallelujah. The second is financial planning. So financial intelligence talks of all the knowledge and the information. I was talking about four phases of our lives. Morning phase, the learning state. Afternoon phase, the investment state. Between 25 to 50 years, according to the word of God and according to the principles of God, that's the time for you to have built a house. That's the time for you to have raised and trained your children. Are you getting my point? That's the time for you to have done certain structural things around your life. The evening stage of your life is the time of resting and legacy. That's when you should be resting. That's the time you should turn back and start writing books. Have a foundation that is blessing and building others. There are many of our parents, 70 years, they are struggling, even fighting with us. The land is my own. The son says, I paid you 10 years ago. I said, I can't remember. And it shouldn't be. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Wake up. There are some of us here. The truth is God has been faithful. Some of our parents have trusted us with lots of money, lots of things. We are there playing around, doing all kinds of things. Tonight, I'm not condemning you. But I'm saying for the first time, brother, can you just tell my, yourself, where am I going? The Bible says when the prodigal son came to himself, nobody conducted deliverance. You can come to yourself. And tonight God is asking somebody to come to himself. Tell yourself, wake up. Say it, wake up. So financial planning. It's often said that he who fails to plan has planned to fail. You must know how to plan your resources. Plan your resources. Hallelujah. Plan your resources. Structure your life.
there's still one more session the session of wealth creation i'm going to teach you when i teach you on streams of income the secret to oceanic wealth um investment mentality three to five year plan for wealth we'll, we'll round up with that one hallelujah <sighs> financial planning has to do with the execution of your ideas the execution of your knowledge you don't just get up and start doing business or get up and just get a job what do you want in your life look at me let me just give you a bit of the theory of financial planning right how much do you think you will need for consistent cash flow per month please don't write anything that doesn't make sense something very reasonable how much do you think how much do you know i'm not forget about your job or what you are doing how much cash flow do you think you will require to be effective this is financial planning and then you bring together a summation of all your assets and liabilities what are your expenditures what are your expenditures expenditures are the things that take money from you assets are the things that bring money to you if your liabilities are greater than your assets you are going to be broke there's no question about that next week is miracle service but oh by the way let me just ship it in here next week we're meeting at charity and faith please take note the miracle service will be taking place at charity and faith please write it and don't forget let's not have people coming here charity and faith 5 30 liabilities are the things that take money from you so if you are buying perfume you are buying a nice cloth that's liability what asset is replenishing the resource that liabilities are taking are you getting me so it's a game of asset and liabilities wealthy people always have more assets than liabilities I don't want to go ahead of myself next week i will be talking or after the last series will be the first week of march we'll talk about the rich and the poor what is the difference between them and then a few things will wrap up that series right i will come back i will revisit these things again financial planning very important you must know how to plan your finances i will teach you when we come back to this I'll teach you the principles of budgeting. Many of us don't know how to budget. You spend as it comes. 10,000, you blow it. 50,000, you blow it. 5,000, we do not understand. And it's not our fault. You must know how to budget. Look at me. If Sam has 10,000 naira, all right? And you come to Sam and you say, please, I want to drink ice cream. And Sam says, sorry, I don't have money for ice cream. It doesn't mean he doesn't have money. It's that within his budget, he has structured his money such that there is no room for ice cream. Are you getting my point? When you budget, you will know how to save. You will know how to build your life. One of our sisters in this place, I remember she came and met me. She had been saving years ago and she met me early this year. And she said, I want to buy a plot of land and i looked at her i said what tiny lady like you have babies i hope of course you can't say she stole money but she had been practicing some of these principles and right now she went and bought land this is a young lady she's not just waiting and hoping for one man to come and say i married you i paid your dowry keep quiet at her age So I will teach you principles of budget. That's all about financial planning. To know how to plan your life. You can't just do it. There are many ways you can help yourself to plan finances. Every time money comes, I've taught you. Part of it is for God. Part of it is for you. Part of it is for your future. You must develop a futuristic investment mentality. You can't just spend and eat everything. You are going to build one day. You are going to build one day. You are going to, if you don't have land, you are broke. I don't care how much you have. Kings in ancient times were rich because of two things. Land and people. Land and people. 
land all the cattle and everything they were together with the land that's why land is called real estate when i teach you on wealth creation i'm going to teach you the trinity of wealth hallelujah we we'll talk about the secret to oceanic wealth. We'll talk about all of that. Multiple streams of income. I don't want to go into it. The last phase is financial discipline. After making all those planning, it takes discipline. Everybody say financial discipline. There are so many people. January, they, wrote, they, they write a lot of things. I want to do this. I want to do that. But they don't end up doing it. Maybe your goal this year is to say, I want to save 50,000 or 100,000. And you are saying that based on the 10, 10,000 that is coming for you every month. And you made up all 15,000 that you will live just within the range. See, let me tell you something. Um, we'll still do that wealth creation, but let me just say it. There is what they call in the business world, the 70-30 principle. Please write it. The 70-30 principle. What that means is that out of the 100% of your money that comes... 10% is for God and 20% is for savings towards investment. The remaining 70% is your own. Whatever 70% of your income cannot give you, you are not yet ready for it. Are you getting me now? So you can have 100,000. For instance, if 100,000 comes, how much is your tithe? How much will you save now? 20,000. So you are saving 20,000. Open an account that the branch is not in Zaria. It's one way of helping yourself. Destroy your ATM. Break it into pieces. It's one way of helping yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody say discipline. By and large, at the end of every planning is discipline that separates men from boys. Anybody can say, I will do this. Discipline is the ability to stay on course. The ability to abide by your principles. You must be disciplined. It's very tempting. You just enter a boutique and you see a very nice dress. And you feel like buying it maybe because they are giving discount. And you look at 70% of your money. You budgeted it and you found out that there is no space. You can't just say let me quickly touch from that one you see that's indiscipline may god bless our mothers i said it during kingdom wealth summit women are better savers than men true or false yeah it's true it's very true it's very true you can see a woman she can be collecting a salary of twenty thousand, but she can be saving two two or four four thousand and a man who is collecting 100,000 will come and be begging her and she can bring some money out. She won't keep it in the bank. She can keep it in... Women keep money in all kinds of places. But at least it works. Women spend and spend and spend. I'm very bad in saving. I don't waste money, but I, I give to a fault, I believe. So because of that one now, I am very bad in saving. Praise God. And so I had to create a system and a structure to help me. You must understand yourself and plan and be disciplined. Some of you right now, you came out to pay your tithe. And the sincere truth is, they sent some money for you. This is end of the month. Some of you next month, they are going to send something. Some of you, your salaries are coming in. Begin to save. If you're married, agree with your wife. Tell her, honey, let's, we're, we're going to plan our future. Let me tell you something. At the end of this series, I'm going to give you a five-year plan. Hallelujah. Within five years, if you follow this plan, there is nothing on earth that will stop you from being a millionaire. Five years, realistically. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord is here.
the principle of seed faith please give me 10 minutes and we'll be done i must teach you on this the principle of seed faith or a robot is believed to be the man who opened the body of Christ to the revelation behind what we call the principle of seed faith and I must teach you please listen I'm about to share with you a very powerful key there are not many times I tell you I'm about to share something deep I want you to believe it this principle has been abused but there is a balance first Corinthians 9 thank you Holy Spirit sorry 2nd Corinthians did I say first 2nd Corinthians 9 let's see the principle of seed faith what is it verse 5 but this I say then because of time we'll just go straight thank you thank you this I say then. Verse, that's verse 6. I'm sorry. 6. God attaches giving. He, he, he correlates giving to sowing. Are you getting my point? The art of giving. He likens it to a farmer. Please let's read. I'm about to show you something. But this I say. He that soweth sparingly shall also reap what? So he's talking about sowing. Sowing, is that true? And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also. Next verse. Now he says, Every man according to his purpose, according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him, so giving is sowing. Are you getting my point now? That's the revelation. He shows us the relationship that when you give, you are actually doing what? Sowing. He said, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So he talks about a sower as a giver. The first revelation of seed faith is that every giving is sowing. Let me explain the law of the seed for you. Please write it. The law of the seed is part of the principle of seed faith. Everything is created from a seed. Everything is created from the seed. A man puts a seed into a woman. She gives him a baby. Is that true? The structure of the kingdom. Every time Jesus speaks about the kingdom. He says the kingdom of God is likened unto a seed. A farmer went to sow. So everything in the kingdom operates based on seed write it seed harvest see just draw a line seed harvest that means every harvest you want to see in your life i'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now you must understand the law of a seed that your harvest according to genesis 8 22 and second corinthians 4 is dependent on your seed that means when you see that there is any harvest you desire find the seed that can produce that harvest honor is the is the seed for what access thank you i taught you this already so every time you want access and doors are closing what is the seed you want a harvest of honor when god wanted a family he gave his seed jesus christ he sowed jesus christ in the earth and he brought many sons into glory are you getting my point now so this is a very consistent principle the gift of a man is the seed for greatness the seed for prosperity tithe is the seed for open heavens prayer and fasting are the seeds for revival nothing is going to change it People can teach all kinds of garbages and theory. Prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Prayer is also the seed 
that produces the harvest of breakthrough among other things is any man afflicted james 5 13 let him pray hallelujah the baptism in the holy ghost is the seed for walking in the spirit and the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit so you see that every time you desire a harvest i'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now every time you desire a harvest find out what seed dr mike mudok said whatever you have not gotten is because you do not yet know how to receive it is someone getting blessed now the principle of seed faith look look at me everybody the principle of seed faith works on this revelation sowing something i have by faith in expectation of something that i do not have that i believe god will give me are you getting the point now sowing something i want something and that i can lay down a seed as a symbol of my faith that's why it's called seed faith are you getting my point now that you can lay down something connecting it to something you're trusting god to do this is the summary of the principle of seed faith does it work absolutely it has a place in the kingdom it is a powerful principle i have seen in my own life hallelujah i touched a bit on it the law of honor commanding results the principle of seed faith is that you connect with a seed a desire that you have something that you desire god to bring to pass in your own life you can use a seed to tap the grace of god upon a man's life you can use a seed to connect dimensions and anointings it is very possible you can tap you can use the principle of seed faith how many of you believe it it is a principle you begin to practice so if somebody buys a car or you want to get married pastor williams is married bishop is married Shade is married you package a seed and say man of god i'm trusting god please hear this it's not just a desire a seed can provoke certain things to happen in your life are you getting my point it has happened in my life i live in this reality the powerful thing about seed let's connect it with that teaching on sacrifice now is that in practicing the principle of seed faith the lord himself tells you what to lay down attaching your faith to it for something you desire I cannot count how many times God has asked me to empty my account into ministries and into the lives of people and all of that. Connecting to certain things. When I see a man of God that carries a grace that I desire, I don't just come and kneel down and say, please lay hands on me. I activate the law of seed faith and I say with this seed, it works. I told you last week, when jacob when isaac wanted to bless his sons he said go and make me what venison bring a seed that will provoke something in my life please listen don't think this is a gimmick to bring money out of your life there are certain levels in this life that it will take seed faith to connect you into you can enter cheaply into certain dimensions as a ministry God has helped us to enter some dimensions cheaply by the operation of the law of seed faith. I remember one of my pastor friends, he went into a city, he was starting a church and the church was not opening up and he called me and I laughed. I said, my brother, stop struggling. Just get a pen and paper. Let me teach you how to cause a city to open. If you want to plant a church, when you enter the city find the largest church in that place and package a seed there is something that makes people to come there 
whether you believe in them or not is irrelevant the people are not idiots you cannot criticize the largest church in a city and expect your church to walk in that dimension it does not just happen so you sow the seed of honor and you get a reward back for it i repented from criticizing men of god years ago when one elderly woman called me and said my son don't ever talk about any man of god again i said mommy i repent this day in the presence of god and you my mouth is sealed i can only attack wrong doctrines attack nonsense but i'm not going to mention any if i ever mention the name of a man of god is because i'm saying something right are you getting my point now you can never criticize bishop stan and want his anointing to come it just doesn't happen are you getting my point honor is not just money honor is not just money you hold people in in true genuine esteem in your heart and then what is in them flows to you you can provoke certain dimensions with a seed listen to me god is speaking to someone every time you ask god for a new level he will give you an instruction there is something you must lay down to go up you must lay down isaac to go up i know that a lot of people have deceived the church they have manipulated things but it does not mean that it's not there there are some of us who have been praying about certain realms and certain dimensions i remember when oral roberts was almost dying there was a time he was almost dying it was apparent that he was going to die he called his wife and he said honey how much do we have in the account and she told him he said go and sow everything quickly he said do you love me he said yes she was trying to complain he said go and sow everything quickly do you know as soon as they dropped that seed all of a sudden he started resuscitating and he stayed many more years your seed can connect you to graces doors anointings dimensions in the spirit please i want you to believe me there are people today i know that they carry certain things that god has put in my life in very evident ways oyedepo came to dunamis and he was talking about enensha he said that when you see my son you see that he carries certain things evidently correctly i want you to know that your seed is one of the greatest miracle that can happen to you it can end a season in your life and open up another season we tried this this year as a ministry i told the treasurer package every collection in our koinonia service and we went to sow it goodness 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 the results have been fearful god did something today that touched me in a very personal way hallelujah somebody sent a very humbling seed into the ministry today hallelujah i want you to believe this i want you to believe you must not pay for everything in life if you understand the principle of seed faith i was sharing i think with the head of protocol every time i see people with vehicles and all of the rest i tell them sow it sow it sow it i went to just two days ago on getting to my house i saw a vehicle parked somebody bought a car for me and dropped it there true story two days ago somebody bought a car and dropped it i just left it there and i just quietly came back i have seen this thing work in my life every time what you have is not enough for a harvest it is a seed if you are afraid to lay it down you can never rise to another level listen god is speaking to many of us here there are instructions that many of us are afraid money never leaves you that is why money never comes to you if you conquer greed in your life you will rise to certain levels of grace i'm teaching you these irrefutable principles of prosperity hallelujah i remember a time when kenneth cope um david oyedeko carried a seed and took it to his mother he bought shares for her 
and a table with his first salary and she looked at him and she prophesied upon him she said you shall be great i never go home without a seat to honor my parents never 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 impossible even if i'm dying of hunger i know that that is what will get me out of where i am many of you do not believe in this principle i'm challenging you you can sow your way out of your present level into a level beyond your imagination i will never forget when i carried singlet i carried singlet and i packaged it and i blessed somebody pastor singlet started coming i didn't know what to do with it yeah i'm not exaggerating hallelujah there are so many gifts that people give me today i don't need i don't know what to do with it but it cannot stop coming because i know how to make it happen whatever is not in your life you do not know how to receive you must challenge yourself this night greed will keep you in poverty forever the law of seed faith works i've seen it break open doors for people i'll never forget one woman who came to me she was barren and honestly the, the normal thing is just to pray cast out that spirit of barrenness but the lord said that she should go to her pastor and sow a seed and she said man of god i confirm this the lord has been speaking to me about this and she carried that seed do you know she dropped that seed it was not up to two weeks two weeks two weeks he didn't even pray for her who is god speaking to tonight could it be that the answer to the next level of your life is hidden in your seed hallelujah we are going to pray and i want to challenge you there are many of you as you pray god is going to give you dangerous instructions that's why i said we we'll take the principle of seed faith at the end of this service please make no i love you too much to rob you of one naira i love you too much not to tell you the truth there are people that god is speaking to you right now god is speaking to you and is telling you that this is the secret to enter the next level you have been admiring people you are seeing people rise to those levels but you think it just happens by dash it's not about wishing there is a law the bible says as far as the earth remains seed time and harvest i want to challenge you we are going to pray i want everybody before we pray just take one minute and talk to the lord and say lord what instruction are you giving me what seed do i need to lay down to rise to a level please if you do not believe what i'm sharing don't worry don't worry god is talking to many people right here there is something you have in your hand he said what do you have in your house hear me many of you this is what will break some chains in your family this is what will break some cycles of poverty some of you this is the seed that can make you graduate this is the seed that can make your supervisor listen to you if you don't believe what i'm saying no problem no problem but i have seen in my life i have seen god coming in fearful ways in my life i will never forget when we were preparing for massacre crusade there was nothing we were broke to the core it was the principle of seed faith that blessed and honored us it was one man of god i sent recharge card of one five to his phone one man of god i sent that seed and almost every day almost every day from the day we took a seed and we sowed it in canaan land there is almost no day that nobody is sowing in this that somebody does not sow into this ministry whether in cash whether in kind somebody needs to sow this seed for their marriage i'm speaking to you this is not coercion god is going to give i'm not going to give you any instruction bring any money i'm not god is speaking to you Mandala you just talk with God for one minute and I'm going to lead us to pray. Somebody's miracle is long overdue.
Mande la capo salabarama. Jesus, speak to us. Open your heart and hear your maker speak. There is always something you must do. You will remain at that level forever until you know how to provoke your way out. Or a Robert touched the body of Christ. This has been abused. But hear me, Koinonia. May the Lord God of heaven judge me if I stand before the people of God and mislead them. Seed faith will take you out of certain seasons. Will take you out of certain seasons. You don't need to know how the miracle will happen. You can provoke your way. You can provoke your way. There are people here, the Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is speaking to you. There are sacrifices that you are going to make. I don't pity you at all. I rejoice with you. I made this sacrifice. I told you years ago. I will never forget when I carried everything that I had. My bag, my whole belonging. And I took it for a prosperity convention. Home and abroad. I dropped it and the Lord told me from this day you have entered well. We are going to pray. If you cannot give up what you have at your present level, you don't deserve to move to a higher one. I'm giving you a key in the spirit. Rise up, please. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to challenge everybody. Please bring out a seed. Bring out something. I'm willing to help a few people do not have i can help you honestly it's not about money brothers and sisters any come a few people can can take two more people hallelujah there's still one more person i want you to connect okay sorry come come hallelujah please instrumentalist please play there are two ways to bind Satan by prayers and by knowledge I have seen the principle of seed faith work in my life I've seen God change situations in very fearful ways for my family my mother did something in my life I was studying all the things she did that brought breakthrough in her, in her, in her business and I found out that there was something my mother did it was casual until the day the Lord revealed to me. My mother took out time and prepared chicken. This chicken, you know, she prepared it for me, not just as her son, but as a man of God. And it opened her. Every time I go to greet them at home, before I come, she has prepared it. That is her own seed, my blood mother, to tap into the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. When I went home, my father was going to the airport. I ran. I said, I must pay for the luggages. I must pay. I insisted. I must pay for the luggages. What have you not seen in your life that you desire? I want you to hold this seed. We are going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, for many of us, God is giving you instructions even beyond today. I am not talking about Project 10,000 project 10,000 is, 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 is something in the house but God is speaking to specific people right now and I want you to pray please begin to pray in tongues and say Lord this is it I'm tired of where I am I'm tired of where I am oh God please pray passionately as though you understand what you are doing inside or outside some of you are face to face with destiny right now don't let greed kill you God is speaking to somebody you can rise to this level except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone but if it dies if it dies if it dies what can you give up to go up? God is speaking to someone. 
what can you give up to go up my altar is calling you oh God my sacrifice is calling you oh God my praise is calling you oh God my honor is calling you Now, I'd like you to begin to pray and say, Lord, I tie this challenge in my life to this seed. I believe it. Please pray. I tie this terminal disease. It is not the money that brings the miracle. It's the sacrifice that is tied to your faith. I tie it to this lack. I tell you next week, we will take a harvest of miracles of unspeakable breakthroughs some of you from this sea tonight your loved ones will call you people who have forgotten about you my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you Hallelujah. Please lift your seed, everybody. I want to pray. You'll be amazed at what will happen to you and your seed right now. I want to pray. If you believe that I'm a servant of God, I want you to lift your seed. I want to pray. I want to show you the power of seed faith. My Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let your anointing come upon these seeds that are lifted I pray in the mighty name of Jesus let this seed I let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon your seed let it come upon your seed I tie it to breakthroughs I tie it to breakthroughs my God we have not taught a lie we have not taught cunningly devised fables goodness I provoke by the power of seed faith let sicknesses die I provoke let carryovers end I provoke it took a sacrifice for covenants to be enacted we use this seed to break covenants to break yokes of financial hardship yokes of perpetual suffering yokes of pain yokes of defeat anoint this seat anoint this seat I stretch my hands under this apostolic anointing I stretch my hands let there be financial miracles let there be financial miracles I provoke it right now in the name of the Lord Jehovah whose I am and whom I serve I command those who have forgotten you I command them to call you I command them to bless you I command restoration I break covenants of hardship jobless situations by the power of seed faith I release miracle jobs I terminate barrenness I terminate barrenness my God honor this house honor this house with dramatic testimonies let your Shekinah rest upon this seed let your glory let your glory I command instant harvest in this glory I command harvest supernatural miracles financial miracles for as many that believe for as many that believe let there be shakings in families 
shakings in businesses shakings in marriages those trusting God for a spouse I pray by that seed every manifestation of spirit husband and spirit wife that stops you from marriage I cause it I cause it I cause it Sacrifice is calling you, oh God. A sacrifice. The Lord is giving people instructions. What you must do to live where you are. A sacrifice. You don't need to know anybody. They that know their God, they shall be strong. A sacrifice. Is calling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, ushers, leave the offering baskets. Father, this is not just a gimmick for money. I pray in the name of Jesus that every seed that comes upon this basket, let there be such an anointing that will follow your people teach them through experience the power of seed faith in the name of jesus go ahead drop your seed and start blasting in tongues drop your seed and start blasting in tongues for the next five minutes for the next five minutes for the next five minutes just drop your seed and start blasting in tongues. We're stepping into a new level. Financial dominion by the power of the Holy Ghost. Financial dominion by the power of the Holy Spirit. If they be willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. If they be willing and obedient, shake Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. Hold on. I want us to do a quick experiment to show you these works. Pick this and write three things that you tied your seed to. And watch if they come to pass. Please write it. Let's do it. Ora Roberts was asked before he died, What is the greatest lesson you want to teach the body of Christ? It says, Sowing your seed with expectation in your heart. Because the Bible says, The expectation of the righteous. Don't just sow your seed blindly. I want you to write. For many of you, there are instructions God has given you beyond today. But write. Write three things. And say, Lord, when I gave this seed, this was what I tied to it. Brothers and sisters, I've seen this work in my life. Oh yes, I have seen God do fearful things. Father, honor these things. Prove to your people that the principle of seed faith is not just a man-made theory to siphon resources out of them. My God, I pray that for many people between now and the miracle service in the name that is above all names, many of you, God will shock you. You will give testimonies your family members will send in testimonies. The online community will send in testimonies that will shock you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Very quickly, hold on. If you are here, our time is fast spent. 
but it's worth it we did something tonight that is very prophetic if you're here listening to me and you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ salvation is the seed for eternal life you've never given your heart to the Lord or while you heard me speak the Holy Spirit kept convincing you and convicting you along several areas I want to give you an opportunity inside or outside we love you and we are inviting you right now to come and make Jesus Lord of your life it's my pleasure to lead you to make Jesus Lord of your life please appreciate them wherever you are the Holy Ghost is speaking to you you need Jesus you're welcome inside and outside please keep clapping koinonia motivate them or you've once given your heart to the Lord and you want to rededicate your life to say Lord from today I make up my mind for you please come God bless you God bless you God bless you thank you they are coming appreciate them God bless you sister if there are some of you outside keep coming don't let anybody stop you don't let anybody stop you don't let anybody stop you come hallelujah I see believe there are a few more people outside the Holy Ghost is convicting you you need to rededicate your heart to the Lord don't be ashamed don't be afraid please find your way here very quickly God bless you I see people still coming God bless you thank you for your courage God bless you clap for them koinonia motivates them God is bringing them by the power of the Holy Ghost thank you thank you for making this decision for Jesus you will never regret it you will never regret it in the name of Jesus Christ now those of you here just lift your hands and say after me if you're still joining them don't worry keep coming please lift your hands and say after me Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I repent of my sins I believe you died for me you rose again for me wash me with your precious blood come and join them cleanse me from all my sins from today I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life Holy Spirit come and live in me empower me to live a victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for you father bless your people they came out because they want to honor you and Lord I pray that may this seed bring a great harvest in their lives use them for your glory bless them and empower them may they carry your glory and may they do great things for the kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ please follow the ushers in one minute the sister waving her hands just follow her she will have your details God bless you and you'll be back now those outside and inside if this is your first time of worshiping with us we have a prayer and a prophecy and a blessing for you no matter how far you are I want you to find your way right to the front here quickly quickly if you brought anyone welcome them as they come God bless you you're welcome as we prepare to take the announcement in a few minutes we'll be out of this place welcome them you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome God bless you God bless you God bless you koinonia is this the best you can do for them thank you we love you we love you thank you thank you hallelujah what a great time hallelujah thank you so much for coming we celebrate and appreciate every one of you this is koinonia hallelujah a meeting put together by eternity network international we're always here fridays but for next week next week is our miracle service we have our miracle service the last week of every month is an explosive time come with your prayer request we want to pray for you and prophesy over your life hallelujah as we speak over your life i assure you that the lord god of heaven will visit you in the name of jesus stretch your hands saints of god as we prophesy over their lives be blessed be lifted be anointed in the name of Jesus whatever challenge you came here with we pray that the hand of God comes upon you in a mighty way you will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ in the 
the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is at work in your life. You are a victor and not a victim. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you with hunger for spiritual things. We bless you with hunger for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray that every kind of carnality will live your life. You will walk in true holiness and righteousness. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord strengthen you. Whatever challenge you came here with, I pray that my God will visit you in very mighty ways. In the name of Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.